Now in this video, we'll see how to configure the static NAT. Now, if you just get back to the basics uh, in the previous video, we have seen the static NAT is a method of mapping one to one mapping where each and every private IP address is mapped with one registered public IP address. There's a one to one mapping, which is done manually by the administrator. And the major drawback is we need to have one is to one ratio, which means if you have 100 users who wants to access internet, we need 100 public IP addresses. So for each and every private user, we need one dedicated registered public IP address. So more commonly used uh, hosting your servers on the internet. Maybe you have a web server in the LAN and you want to host this server on the internet. We, we can still use static NAT in those kind of scenarios. So let's say practically here. Now I got a small example here, the lab setup. Before I go ahead, let, let me explain you the lab setup, what I'm going to use for uh, for all the remaining NAT labs here. Now I got a router, the router one, which is acting as my, my company router here. And I got some users in the LAN and these are all my inside users, nothing but all my private users and they are using 192.168.1.0 network. And I want to ensure that uh, when they go outside to this network, when they go through router one, they should go up with some public IP address. Uh, we'll see what public IP I'm going to use. But before that, as here, we are not going to connect to the real internet here. We are going to connect our router in the packet tracer here, connecting to another router, the router two, which is acting as my ISP router. And I'm connecting a zero by zero interface here. And I'm using the IP address of 100.111.100.112. Uh, most likely these will be the public IP addresses given by the service border. It may be static or dynamic IP addresses. Uh, but as here, we are not uh, connecting to the real internet. We are just simulating. This is like, like a internet connection going to the service border. And then from that service border router, I'm connecting to a switch uh, and some server computers. I'm going to connect some server computers here with some IP addresses, 200.111, 200.112. And these servers will, will behave just like I have a real internet connection. Now we are not connecting any real internet. So what we want is we want to ensure that when 1.1 is trying to access 200.111, it should go via router and the private IP, whatever I'm using here, it should get translated to a public IP and the request should reach the server on the internet and the server is going to reply back and I should get back the web page, web page or whatever it is. Now our requirement is we are trying to access some servers on the internet and the router one is the one which is doing the NAT for us. Okay. So the first step, we need to configure the basic IP addressing as per the diagram. And I got the topology, which is pre-designed already with some IP addresses. And on the router on here, I got some routers here. You can see the servers with IP addresses and 192.168.1.0 network in the LAN. And even on the routers, I got my uh, pre-configured IP addressing. So let me take down the diagram first. Now this is going to be our diagram. 192.168.1.0 network. So let's go to the router one command line and check the IP addressing as per the diagram. Now if you go to router one, if I give show IP interface brief, I already configured the IP addressing as per the diagram here, pre-configured. And this WAN interface 100.111 with, with this IP address here. And then the next thing, let's, let's check on the router two, on the router two, that is my ISP router. Let's go to the command line and verify the same show IP interface brief. Now show IP interface brief, you can see the interface F zero by zero interface. I'm using 200, 100 here and the WAN interface 100, 112. Now the basic setup is uh, I have configured the IP addressing as per the diagram. And the next thing I'm going to use from the router one, I'm going to use the default route. Default route, because normally from our router to ISP, we always configure the default route. And from ISP to our router, we are going to use a static routing. And static routing, that too for the public IP address, what we are using here. Now in my example, I'm going to use 51.1. network with slash 24 submit mask. This is the range of the public IP, what I'm going to use in my labs. So we are going to configure a static route for this public IP. 
because the isp will never have a route to your private networks now the isp will identify your networks with this public ip range and my traffic as it is going with 192.168.1 network it will go from the lan and once it reaches the router before it sends outside this interface it's going to send with the public ip range now in this example i'm going to use 50 dot network as my public ip address it can be any address as per the isp given so i'm going to assume that 50 dot network is the public ip address what i caught so we are going to configure the route here so let's go and check the same thing again this is also pre-configured here in my routers so if you just get into the command line uh, from my router one if i give show ip route static or simply show ip route now i can see there is a default route already pre-configured from the router one to isp and if i go to the router two that is my isp router if i give show ip route you can see there is a static route already pre-configured now these configurations you'll find in the workbook as well uh, the, but here i, I just pre-configure these things so if you want to verify we can use show running config you know the default route commands ip route 0000 now let's go ahead with static configurations here now i'm going to simulate one small scenario here where i'm going to assume that there are three private users 192.168.1.1 1.2 i want to ensure that this 1.1 1.2 1.3 should get translated to public ip of 5111 5111 5112 5113 similar way 1.4 with 5114 1.5 like that it will go on so we are not going to write each and everything we are just simulating as if we have three private users who wants to access the servers on the internet now to provide the reachability we must have a default route towards the isp and from the isp to isp to our router we must have a static route for the public ip address okay so let's go and verify the same here i'll go to the command line on the router one I'll go to the PC, one of the PC in the LAN. So I'll simply say IP config. So when I say IP config, just to check my IP address. So if I try to ping to 200.111, so I, I should not get the reply. So I, I should not get the reply. And the reason is when you're trying to ping to 200.111, the packet reaches the router. Now the router one have a default route it will send to isp isp knows where is 201.1.1 but when the packet is returning back it will come back here now the router two don't know where is 192.168.1.1 because the router two knows about 50 network but but not one dot network because the isp will not identify your private addresses isp only identify your public ip and right now as there is no translation so your packet is going with the same ip uh, the same address we can say uh, this is just for testing purpose I'm, I'm just using it if you try to trace 201.1.1 so most likely the packet reaches the router and after that it will not come back actually so you don't you don't get the trace after that okay in fact it is going till uh, trace 201.1.1 it's going to It's going to 1.100, 192.168.1.100, and after that, uh, it may not work. So let's let's verify why it why it's not working because of there is no translation. But after doing translation, it should work. And my requirement is 1.1 should go with 5111. This is a translation requirement. So let's go and configure. Now to configure this, it's a very simple configuration. We need to go to config mode. We need to say IP NAT inside source static. And then we need to tell what is the private IP address and what is the equivalent public IP to use when it goes outside your network. Now similar way 1.2 map with 5112 and 1.3 is going to map with 5113. So like that if you have 100 translations we need to manually write 100 lines. Now this is how we, we, we do configuration. Let's, let's go to the command line and quickly configure this on the router 1. As per my diagram, on the router one, we are doing NAT. We need to say IP NAT insert short static. And we need to say, what is your local IP address? 
So my local IP address is 1.1, that is my private IP. And what should be your global IP address? Global means your public IP address. So I'm going to use 5111. Similar way, I'll translate 5112. 1.2 should go with 5112. 1.3 should go with 5113. So I'm not writing the fourth computer. I just want to test it out for the fourth. And the next thing is we need to implement implement the NAT. Now implementation is just two commands. We need to say IP NAT inside, IP NAT outside. Now remember which interface is inside. Now the interface which is facing towards the LAN from where you are expecting the private IP addresses, all those interfaces will be referred as inside interface. Now inside interface is your LAN interface from where you are expecting your private IP addresses. It can be one interface, it can be more than that, depends. Now let's say you have one more branch. These are connecting to my another branch offices and there is another interface connecting to ISP. Now out of this, this interface will be referred as outside interface uh, where you, you expect to connect to ISP, the interface connecting to ISP and where you want to ensure that any, any traffic going on the outside interface should go up with a public IP. So once we say inside outside, it's going to take the private IPs from the inside interface and it is going to send them as a public IP address on the outside interface. Okay, so we need to configure the interface in the LAN is inside and this is outside interface. And remember one more thing, if you have any interface connecting to another branch offices, your own branch offices, not to internet. Now these interfaces are not outside interfaces because we want as it is IP addresses to go here, not as a public IPs. So don't, don't configure each and every interface as outside. So only the interface which are connecting to ISP will be an outside interfaces. Now in my scenario, F0 by 0 is inside and S0 by 0 is outside interface as per my physical topology also. So let's go to the conf let's go to the router one. That's router one. And then we need to say interface F0 by 0. We need to say IP NAT inside and interface S0 by 0 IP NAT outside. So if you misconfigure these inside outside interfaces or if you do not configure on any one of these, the NAT is not going to work and it should be correct as well. And for verification, we can use a command called show IP NAT translations. Right now, uh, here you can see 1.1 and 5111. Now here you'll see some options here. Now the options here is, now, now the first thing here you'll, you'll find two types of options here. So whenever you say inside, inside means always our own IP addresses. When we say outside means remote, remote, remote devices. Or uh, I'm generating a traffic from here. This will be my inside. And the servers which I'm accessing, that will be always my outside, remote destinations. And in that, again, we have something called inside local and global. Now, when I say inside local means my private IP addresses. This is my private IP address. And when I say inside global means my public IP addresses. And when we define outside local, outside local means remote, remote local private IP address and outside global means remote public IP addresses. Now in these two columns, you will see the remote device IP addresses and most likely you will see the public IPs only on both the sides because you, you may not see the private IPs over there. But this column here represents the remote device and these two, two columns here is going to represent my local device information. So right now we don't see anything here and the reason is we did not generate the traffic. Now let's try to generate the traffic. Now I'm going to generate two different types of traffics, HTTP and, and ICMP traffic. Now in the ACLs we have seen how to generate HTTP traffic. You just need to connect some computers and the IP addresses I'll go to the first computer, first computer here, and I'll try to generate HTTP traffic. Now to generate HTTP traffic, we just need to go to the browser and then we need to type the IP address of that particular server. It's going to be 200.111 and then go. This is how we can simulate the HTTP traffic. Now similar way, I'm going to do the same thing on the second PC. 
uh, second PC also I'll generate the HTTP traffic but for 200.112 so I may still able to go and from the third computer I'm going to generate ping traffic I'll try to ping 200.111 okay you can see the reply is coming but if I try to ping to uh, from the fourth computer if I try to ping from the fourth computer I should not see anything now the reason is very simple you know we did not translate the fourth computer so you don't expect uh, this computer to reply get a reply because we did not translate in the translation table so which means translation is something mandatory now if I give show IP and translations you will see some of the traffic is generated here let us first try to understand these two things um, now here now here you can see I've generated traffic from 1.1 and 1.2 they both are going with 5111 and 5112 respectively and we are accessing 200.111, 200.112 on port number 80 it means it's HTTP traffic now these entries will be removed automatically once there is no active traffic going on that particular uh, source to public IPs okay now similar way here you can see these four messages now these four messages are coming from 1.3 we generated 1.3 ICMP traffic and it is going with the public IP of 5113 and it's reaching 200.111 that's a that's a server here and I don't see the fourth computer and the reason is you know uh, we did not uh, translate the fourth one if you start translating the fourth one also like IP NAT insert short static because we got a fourth computer also 1.4 with 5114 and now if I generate the traffic from the fourth computer you should see the reply here and if you verify the translation table uh, translation table show IP and translations you can see from 1.4 it's an ICMP traffic the protocol is ICMP here it is TCP you can see the translation here now this way it's going to confirm that the users now here you can see even though this user is 1.1 when it reaches the router it takes the private IP as 1.1 and send it as 5111 and it reaches the ISP based on the default route and based on the destination address it reaches the server and the server is going to reply back to the router and the router is replying and it is going to see that 50 dot network is on this site based on the static route for the public IP it will come here but when it's sending back here it's going to convert it as a private IP and send it back as 1.1 now the router is doing complete translation here and it is going to maintain the translation in the translation table and we can verify that by using a command called show ipnat translations